In the intro to this playlist, I talked a little bit about the importance of breathing from a big picture perspective, how it's important with gas exchange in the metabolic system, how it's important with the nervous system because the vagus nerve innervates the diaphragm, and how it's important in movement because the diaphragm acts as a spinal stabilizer. So breathing is a very important physical skill. And I think a lot of times people forget that it's a physical skill, just like running, where if you ask most people who are physically capable if they could run, they'd say yes but there are still varying degrees of complexity that people have with regards to their ability to run. A world-class runner or somebody who changes the direction in the NFL has a much different level of coordination and understanding of running than somebody who goes out on a 10-minute jog once per week. So breathing has that same level of gradient in terms of how much you can understand about the muscular system that coordinates respiration. And what I wanted this playlist to be, instead of being a catch-all that allows people to learn everything possible about breathing, because I didn't really think that was possible, what I wanted to do is give people a first step to be able to understand how do I learn functionally about my breathing system, not about some of the more dense scientific aspects of breathing or the biomechanical aspects of movement, but physically how do I get better at breathing? And the first thing that I wanted to kind of teach from an educational perspective was what the diaphragm actually is. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that talk about diaphragmatic breathing and most general athletes or people who are interested in fitness don't even know what diaphragm actually is. So it's a muscle that kind of acts like a balloon inside of your rib cage. And when you inhale, it contracts and the contraction and shortening of your diaphragm pulls it flat and pulls it down. And that process allows for a pressure environment that brings air from the outside environment in through your nasal passage or in through your mouth and fills up into your lungs. And then when you go through exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and kind of moves up and creates a pressure environment that pushes air out. So this is one of the major reasons why people talk about belly breathing because if air is moving into the deeper portions of your lung, then you're getting the ability for your diaphragm to go through a deeper contraction and pull more air deep down through your lungs, which is why you would get a deep breath if you're pulling from your diaphragm because you're pulling more air to fill your lungs all the way up. So I think that's the only anatomical thing that you need to understand with regards to diaphragmatic breathing. And what I wanted to do in this video was give you the first step to be able to understand how to coordinate your respiratory muscles so that you could actually use some of the other videos in this playlist where I'm in some more aggressive positions doing positional breathing exercises. So this would be the first position that you would get in to start doing positional breathing work. And this position is the best to do it in because your spine now does not have to be supported against gravity. You're laying down, the floor acts as support for you, all of your spinal musculature can kind of relax, your diaphragm doesn't need to work hard to stabilize your spine, so it allows you an environment to really relax and control the muscles in your pelvic girdle, the muscles in your rib cage, the muscles in your core, and allows you to go through the breathing process without actually having to consciously hold yourself up on two feet against gravity. So the first thing that we would do is put somebody's hand on their belly and hand on their chest. And when you do this, you get insight into where the air is moving in. So if you're what they would call a chest breather, when you pull air in, whether it's through your nose or through your mouth, if you have a, that type of environment where this is rising and this isn't moving, that would generally be something that you don't want to do if you're trying to get access and control of your diaphragm. You want the air to be moving from down here, from where the diaphragm's actually allowing space for air to move into the lungs and go down. So the first thing that people, I would coach people to do is learn how to get control of allowing this part of you to rise. So having just 
through relaxed breathing. Generally, I start through the nose, having your ability to pull in and out just from the belly without allowing your chest to expand. So if I'm here and here, and I'm just gonna lay, I generally tell people to close their eyes, and this would be a process that's very similar to, to meditative breathing, or can be done after a cool down and an exercise session to bring you back down into a, a less threatened physical state. And I have people just work on being able to coordinate air moving in through the belly, which would be belly breathing. So laying down. After somebody has control of doing that, then the next stage would be to be able to pull in through the belly, in through the chest, out through the chest, out through the belly, so that you're getting almost a full volume inhalation and a full volume exhalation. So, and that process where it's expand, expand, contract, contract, and you're getting the air to move in through the belly, in through the chest, out through the chest, out through the belly. After going through and getting basic control of your diaphragm in this laying position, you can start to increase the, the constraints or the difficulty of this type of breathing session. So you can have people practice bracing the midline and tightening this so that if they need to breathe while they're doing squat cleans, for example, if you're a competitive crossfitter, you're gonna need midline tension to be able to stabilize your spine so that you're not getting crushed under load. So it is a useful tool to be able to have tension through your midline and still be able to contract and breathe. So having this brace set and then still being able to move air into the belly. Now with that tension, you're obviously not gonna get a full relaxed 100% terminal lung volume inhalation, but that's okay because this is just more of a coordination exercise than it is you actually learning how to breathe correctly because I'm not really sure that there's a correct way to breathe in all situations. It kind of requires context. When you have those things as constraints to apply, you can create tension through your midline, you can create tension and actually go through isometric contractions of your lats and chest to be able to create tension up here on the top of your rib cage. You can practice breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, in through the mouth, out through the nose, in through the nose, out through the nose, in through both the nose and the mouth at the same time, in through and then out the nose and the mouth at the same time. So it allows you a ton of iterations to be able to get control and awareness of your respiratory muscles. This would be the first step in your ability to start playing with the positional breathing tools and learning how to do endurance sessions, strength sessions, and more advanced coordination breathing sessions. But first, I would master it in this very basic laying down position with your feet supported and just get control in this basic environment and then use the positional breathing positions that I created in this YouTube playlist to start expanding your ability and understanding of how to breathe in more complicated positions.